The Origin of Species was published in England in 1859. The author was Charles Darwin. In his book, Darwin attempted to explain the origin of life and maintain that all living things had evolved from a common ancestor. Another claim was that a selfish and ruthless fight for survival prevailed amongst living things. The name of his book clearly revealed his ideas. The origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. Darwin's book, The Descent of Man, on the other hand, contained a thoroughgoing racism. In his view, some races were more evolved and advanced than others. Asians, Turks and blacks were almost at the same level as apes. Furthermore, according to the laws of evolution, the weak would be eliminated. Darwin devoted the opening chapters of his book to the subject of animal breeding. He wrote that in order to raise productive breeds of horse, only healthy lines should be allowed to breed down the generations. He would go even further in the descent of man and suggest that this method could also be applied to human beings. Regarding human beings as a species of animal, Darwin thought that they could be improved in the same way as animals. It would later be realized that these ideas of Darwin's were completely false. Yet few people were aware of this given the primitive level of science at the time. At that same time, a fierce admirer and follower of Darwin emerged. This was Darwin's nephew, Francis Galton. In his autobiography, Memories of My Life, he writes, The publication in 1859 of The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin made a marked epoch in my own mental development, as it did in that of human thought generally. Its effect was to demolish a multitude of dogmatic barriers by a single stroke, and to arouse a spirit of rebellion against all ancient authorities whose positive and unauthenticated statements were contradicted by modern science. The concepts that Galton denigrated as dogmatic barriers and ancient authorities were religious systems and beliefs. Galton first published his racist ideas in 1869 in his book, Hereditary Genius. In this book, he maintained that the English nation had an inherently superior blood to other nations. In Galton's view, measures needed to be taken to protect that blood. In this way, a most superior human race could be produced. In order to find a name for this racist evolutionist theory, Galton looked to the pagan world, where his theory had once been put into practice. It was he who came up with and spread the word eugenics, meaning good birth in Greek. Given the primitive level of scientific understanding at the time, the idea of eugenics soon acquired widespread support. 
The Eugenics Education Society was established in 1907. Based at the Statistics Department of University College London. In 1926, the name was simplified and it became the Eugenics Society. The Eugenics Society maintained that all handicapped people in society should be sterilized. The society praised the members of the aristocracy and the royal family, but regarded the members of other races as an undeveloped species of animal. Charles Darwin's son, Leonard Darwin, was president of the organization between 1911 and 1928 and its most active member. After Great Britain, eugenics began to attract supporters in the United States. Evolutionist circles there carried out a great deal of propaganda on the subject in the 1920s and 30s. Certain states passed the laws known as sterilization laws. At that same time, parallel developments were taking place in Europe. Yet nobody at the time was aware that these developments would later turn into an unbelievable slaughter. Eugenics, the foundations of which were laid by pagan barbarian tribes and which was later attempted to be spread and placed on an alleged scientific footing by Charles Darwin and his nephew Francis Galton, was actually a terrible crime against humanity. The sterilization laws passed in the USA in the 1920s as a result of a wide-ranging propaganda campaign are today regarded by the citizens of that same country as a shameful example of racism. What is more, it has now been proved that the theory of eugenics is a superstition, totally at variance with the scientific facts. The recent Human Genome Project has shown that the genetic differences between races and individuals are very small, and that it is baseless to even attempt to construct any reproduction policy based on them. Human races were created equal by God. In the Quran, God says, Mankind, we created you from a male and female, and made you into peoples and tribes, so that you might come to know each other. The noblest among you in God's sight is that one of you who best performs his duty. God is all-knowing, all-aware. Quran 49.13 the weak and genetically sick must be treated with affection and compassion, protected and nurtured. But instead of this approach, revealed to us by God as a religious moral duty, the Western world at the beginning of the 20th century turned to eugenics, a product of paganism and the theory of evolution. The scale of the savagery that this pagan evolutionary theory led to will be revealed when we consider the case of Germany. In order to do this, we need to examine the men of ideas produced by Germany in recent times.